Wait a minute, Wolverine's family member created Weapon X? And Wolverine has an actual cousin who is a member of Canada's premier superhero team, Alpha Flight? Welcome back Nerd Squad, it's me, Amanda. I guess when it comes to starting off a video where we are talking about the Wolverine family tree, it's best to start at its crunchy adamantium core with Wolverine himself, aka Logan, aka James Howlett. Like Magneto, Wolvie has a bunch of names too throughout the years, including one of my favorites, Patch. And also like Magneto, he has a very tragic origin story, one that we've seen explained multiple times both in the comics and in Wolverine Origins the film, which is a movie that happened. Oh boy did it happen. And also like Magneto, Wolverine started out as a villain in the comics, albeit much more briefly and I guess more of an antagonist than a straight up villain, making his first appearance as the Hulk's adversary in the Hulk's own comic series, launching a rivalry that has actually spanned decades. Is it weird that I keep comparing Wolverine to Magneto? Yeah. Let's stop doing that and jump into this family tree. Initially, all we knew of Wolverine was that he was a mutant, and in fact, it was even suggested in the beginning that the adamantium claws that he possessed themselves were actually genetic. It wouldn't be till later that we'd actually learn the adamantium on his skeleton was actually added later on by Weapon X through a painful bonding procedure that few test subjects could survive, let alone benefit from, with the main time that we all kind of figured that out being when Magneto stripped the adamantium from him. That was a thing that was very memorable. Before he was Wolverine though, who was Wolverine? Well, if you ever asked Logan himself, he actually might struggle to answer this question due to all the tampering done to his mind, as well as years of both physical and emotional trauma that his brain had suffered and healed from. It's actually believed that the reason why Wolverine doesn't often remember things from his past is because his brain heals over painful memories and that scar tissue and his healing factor's self-preservation instincts could contribute to memory loss. But also, Wolvie has been shot and stabbed in the head. A lot, which I think would mess with anybody's memories if they could heal. Definitely not. If you couldn't heal, well, you wouldn't have any memories because you'd be a dead guy. However, while Wolverine might struggle to remember his many pasts, fans of the characters likely won't, or fans that have read his many pasts, anyways, including Origins. Before Wolverine was a superhero or even was known by the name of Logan, he was James Howlett. James grew up as a sickly child who actually was perhaps lucky that he even made it to the point of his mutant powers manifesting. Although, I guess when you consider just how that happened, and then everything that came after that, and all of Logan's life, Logan might not see himself as being quite so lucky. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's head back to Wolverine's origins. James was raised as the youngest son of a wealthy couple, John Howlett Sr. and his wife Elizabeth Howlett, who lived in Alberta, Canada. However, in truth, he was actually the biological son of Elizabeth and the Howlett's groundskeeper, Thomas Logan, born out of an affair between the two. At least, that was heavily implied. John Sr. Howlett may have still been James's biological father, but as I said, it is heavily implied that he was not. Still, John raised James as if he were his own anyway. Whether this was because he was not aware of his wife's affair or simply because he just felt it was the right thing to do, despite her infidelity. Seeing James still as one of his own. We don't really know that much about John Sr. Howlett, although he seemed to have a kind heart, but it is implied that he was the one to deal the death blow to John Jr., James's older brother, doing so in defense of their mother, Elizabeth, after John Jr.'s powers, because he also had powers, manifested and he went into a rage. This likely weighed on John Sr. heavily. Also, yes, if you were wondering, Wolverine had a brother. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Elizabeth Hudson Howlett was Wolverine's mother. Hudson was Elizabeth's maiden name and would actually be a very important name when it came to Wolverine's story later in life. But we'll get back to that in a bit. And it seems likely that when it comes to Logan's ex gene, he may actually get it from her side of the family or from his biological father's side or, you know, a combination thereof. Though, more than likely, I think it's from Elizabeth. Elizabeth's side of the family. She gave birth to not one mutant, it turns out, but two! Though both sons may have been fathered by Thomas Logan, in the alternate reality of Earth 4011 that appears in Wolverine The End, it is stated that Elizabeth is where Wolverine gets his X gene from. Now, of course, that's not main continuity, but still, some people feel like that's, you know, could also apply to the main continuity. The traumatic and life threatening experience she had with her first son is implied to be what caused her to be sent to a mental institution. Eventually, though, she would return but life would forever be changed at the Howlett estate, with Elizabeth mostly preferring to hide in her room, even neglecting her younger son James as a result. As we have previously stated, young James also had an elder brother who passed away, John Jr. Howlett. John Jr. Howlett may have also truly been the biological son of Elizabeth and Thomas 
Logan, the groundskeeper, but we don't really know that for sure. What we do know is that John Jr. died young, after apparently also being born a mutant. It's believed that his father killed him out of defense of his mother, who he had attacked. Some believe to this day that John Jr. may even still be out there somewhere, alive, possessing powers similar to Wolverine, despite the fact that Wolverine seemed to see his older brother during time spent in hell. Which I think would be pretty crazy if we brought him back, but also, I feel like if we haven't seen him at this point, where has he been? Aside from his elder brother who passed away, young James also had a half brother in Dog Logan. Dog was the son of Thomas Logan and an unnamed woman. He grew up on the Howlett estate and became one of James's playmates, along with Rose, who was brought in to live in the estate as a playmate for James, while also being given serving duties as she got older. Dog at one point saved James's life after accidentally endangering it. However, Dog's feelings for Rose and forceful actions towards her, as well as his jealousy of James and all that he stood to inherit, drove a wedge between them as they grew up. Eventually, this division led Dog to attack James, causing him physical and emotional harm, with Dog and his father evicted from the estate as a result of this. Oddly enough, Dog somehow survived to the modern age, despite having been born like Wolverine in the late 19th century. At one point, he has a bunch of time diamonds, which I guess he could use to time travel, so this could be how he's lived so long. Or, you know, perhaps his longevity is still as of yet an undefined power of his. We haven't seen him for a while, but still, pretty sure we saw him at least in like 2014 or something, so. Considering it's the 19th century and then we see him in a comic from 2014, that's a little, <laughs> what's happening there? We don't know. Thomas Logan is heavily implied to be the biological father of James Howlett, which seems to have been why he used Logan as an alias in the past. Although, as I've said previously, James's mind also became so addled that eventually he would not remember his true name as James Howlett and would forget the connection of that name, Logan, to his biological father. So he might have just picked that name he thought randomly, but it wasn't so random. In fact, when Dog eventually comes to look for James and Rose years after they have fled the estate, James initially does not even recognize Dog or remember who he is or that he's a Logan. Thomas was a hard man, driven to drink and often behaving aggressively, especially towards his own son who lived with him, Dog. In fact, this is likely a big part of the reason that Dog turned out the way he did. After both Thomas and Dog were removed from the Howlett estate, Thomas snuck back onto the property, killing the Howlett servants and using Rose to gain access to Elizabeth's room, and of course, bringing Dog along with him. There, Thomas attempted to get Elizabeth to run away with him before being confronted by John Sr., who Thomas then just killed. This is what caused James's mutant powers to manifest, as he sort of came into all this chaos, and in a blind fit of loss, desperation, and rage, he scarred Dog and killed Thomas with his bone claws. The trauma of the whole occurrence and its similarity to the tragic event of her first son proved too much for Elizabeth, who blamed herself and took her own life. James and Rose, also overwhelmed, chose to leave the estate, fleeing together. If you thought Thomas Logan was bad, well, I mean, you would be right, but while John Sr. seems like a well meaning sweetheart by comparison, his own father was more akin to Thomas than his own son in terms of his cruelty. We don't know his name, but Mr. Howlett, or the old man as he was sometimes referred to, is the grandfather of Wolverine and the father of John Sr. He was the one who forged the Howlett name and created their fortune through unknown means. The old man was critical of John Sr. and his offspring and may have even at one point threatened the life of young John Jr. because of his mutant gene. He constantly harped on John Sr. criticizing his parenting skills as he felt James was too weak and too soft. After Dog blamed Rose for the deaths of Thomas, John Sr., and Elizabeth, Mr. Howlett disowned James, although he did still help him and Rose escape town and years later would actually come to regret sending his grandson away, giving Dog, then his heir and ward, information to help track James and Rose down once more so that he might actually make amends. However, Dog, of course, had some other plans. He was like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll totally do that. I'm not gonna go and try to kill this person who stands to potentially take an inheritance away from me that I just got. Wouldn't do that at all. <laughs> oh yeah, he definitely tried to do that. From the beginning almost, young James's life was steeped in tragedy. A tragedy so great, in fact, that he wouldn't even remember most of it as time went on. That's how great it was. <laughs> not even Rose, who also tragically died by accident at Wolverine's claws during a fight between him and Dog, after Dog had tracked him down with information 
information given to him by the old man. Wolverine would see Rose's spirit in visions when close to death, but not remember her or his own past. He would often mistake her for Jean instead, which kind of makes sense because Rose and Jean do look very similar. And Jean herself has also, of course, appeared in Wolverine's death visions in spirit form. Often, too, because, you know, half the time Jean happens to be dead in the comics, it seems, anyways. So that makes sense. However, this is only the beginning of Wolverine's tragedies. Tragedy would plague Wolverine throughout his family tree, even extending through his mother's heritage and her own family, the Hudsons. Elizabeth Hudson had two brothers, Elias and Frederick. Both survived their parents, who died tragically in a shipwreck. Everything is a tragedy when it comes to any story attached to Wolverine. Even his mother's family couldn't escape this comic book curse. Elias seems to have been the older brother, as he was the one who ended up running the family business, the Hudson Bay Company, which, by the way, is a real department store company that has strong ties and roots in Canada, so I kind of love that the Hudsons are related to the Hudson Bay Company. Wolverine even at one point unknowingly works for his uncle Elias, who was later driven to take his own life, shortly after Wolverine left. Mental health seems to be something that the Hudsons struggled with throughout their history. Probably something Wolverine should watch out for. Actually, I feel like Wolverine has also struggled with that, so I mean, we all struggle with that, so fair enough. Frederick, however, ended up working with the Canadian military, overseeing a training facility, a facility that ended up being used by notorious and often confusing Wolverine villain Romulus, who was retconned to have been the mysterious figure making Wolverine's life even more tragic the whole time. <laughs> like he even needed help in that department at all, Romulus, geez. And of course, as Romulus enters the equation, here is where Hudson's involvement with Wolverine gets really weird, but kind of great, but really weird. Logan ended up at the military training facility where Victor Creed, aka Sabretooth, and Silas Burr, aka Cyber, and currently known as Hornet, would also be. Under orders from Frederick, who did not know that Logan was his nephew, Burr was instructed to make Logan's life living hell in order to turn him into a loyal killer. Another of Romulus's agents, Janet, was also used to manipulate Logan through having him fall in love with her. But not, of course, so she could persuade Logan to do what she wanted, as you can kind of do with people that, you know, love you. You can kind of convince them of things. But unbeknownst to her, so she could be basically fridged, aka killed, thereby motivating Logan in one way or another. Another classic Romulus plot. Frederick himself would later be killed on Romulan's orders by his great nephew Dawkin, aka Akahiro, the son of Wolverine. Frederick never had any children with his wife, but did have an illegitimate son with his secretary, whom she vengefully named Frederick Hudson II in order to hurt Frederick's relationship with his wife. Take that, Frederick. His secretary, Caitlin McDonald, took her own life sadly shortly after giving birth. While Frederick didn't do much of note in his own life, he did have three sons who are pretty relevant. Truette, Victor, and James. Frederick II himself died young as the result of a bar brawl, which is a pretty fitting way to go for anyone who's related to Wolverine. Truett Hudson, often referred to simply as Wolverine's cousin, though more specifically Wolverine's first cousin once removed, is one of the most important of the three. Truett is also known in the comics as the Professor. And while he is also bald, we are not talking about that Professor, not Charles, aka Professor X. Instead, Truett was the Professor, also known by the alias Professor Thornton, who became tied to the Weapon Plus program, likely inspiring it as a result of stumbling into a lab in a World War II German camp that actually belonged to, get this, Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister. What a strange connection I never thought would exist, and yet it does. From there, Weapon Plus would later spawn the creation and project known as Weapon X on their journey to create new super soldiers. This was following the success of Project Rebirth, which led to the creation of Captain America, who was labeled by the program as Weapon One. The professor would later be put in charge of brainwashing Team X operatives, among them Logan included, and would be known as director of the Weapon X program. Yeah, that's the thing. That is literally his first cousin once removed, who was running that program. Truett actually also has ties to Dracula, another famous Wolverine enemy. Truett himself would be killed seemingly and surprisingly by Silver Fox, who at this point was believed to have actually been alive this whole time and also now be evil and working for Hydra. And if you don't remember Silver Fox, she's one of Wolverine's first loves. However, in this reality, this probably wasn't actually Silver Fox, but a mutated clone of her. At least, all us Silver Fox fans are hoping that's what happened. 
Hopefully it's not really a silver fox. To this day, I think a lot of people say, ah, that's a clone. Victor is the middle child of Frederick II. He himself was also manipulated by Romulus, because isn't everyone. He acted as Romulus's right hand man and was shown to be extremely durable and strong, although I don't know if we ever found out if he was a mutant or not. Victor was also born mute as well as blind. He met his end at the hands of Wolverine. Continuing right along with the three McDonald Hudson brothers, we also have James Hudson. That's right, guardian of Alpha Flight. Andrew, are you proud of me? I found a way to work Alpha Flight into this video. Although considering Wolverine's history with the team, that really shouldn't be hard in general to do while talking about him because he himself has also, you know, been a pretty good ally and sometimes team member of Alpha Flight. But anyways, this isn't about Wolverine's life story. This video is about his relatives and his family connections. Enter James Hudson, also Wolverine's cousin and half brother to the villainous Truette. Half brother because all three brothers actually had different mothers. James was the youngest of the three, which means I got to save the best for last. Before Guardian was Guardian, James Hudson developed a suit for Amcan Oil Corporation to be used to help locate underground oil deposits. However, after he learned his suit was going to be sold to the US military and used as a weapon, which he was not here for, nah -uh -uh, he destroyed its plans and stole the helmet of the suit, making it unusable. He then went to the Canadian government for help and protection from Amcan Oil. He would go on to become founder of Department H and the leader and founder of Alpha Flight. James Hudson and his wife, Heather McNeil Hudson, aka Vindicator, would also become fast friends with technical relative James Howlett, ever since they ran into a feral Logan on their honeymoon as seen in Alpha Flight issue number 33, which has a flashback to that. James and Heather have one daughter together, Claire, who would be, I think, a cousin twice removed to Wolverine. So that's also a thing. John Sr. and Elizabeth aren't the only ones with relatives relevant to Wolverine's history though. Thomas and the Logans also have an extensive past, and at least one relative that you might find at least interesting. Folkburn Logan. If Wolverine were to run his DNA through someplace like Ancestry.com, he'd learn that one, he probably has a lot more kids than he ever knew about. And two, that he was also related to Folkburn Logan. Folkburn lived back in the 11th century and is referred to by his fellow soldier and friend as the last pagan living in London, England. Folkburn runs into Thor and the Horsemen of the Apocalypse during a fight between them and is saved by Thor himself. Just as he begins to pray to the old gods, hilariously, which I love, as seen in Uncanny Avengers issue number six. Well, this pretty much covers all of Logan's family when it comes to where he comes from from and his origins, there's a lot more tragedy ahead for us to explore when it comes to romance and his own offspring. We're running a little short for time on this video, so I'm going to briefly cover some of the major wives slash loves and children we've come to know as related to Wolverine in the main comic book continuity of Earth 616. But if you enjoyed this video and you want a specific video about Wolverine's kids, let us know in the comments. Or if you would rather perhaps something a little different, such as hearing me attempt to explain the history of Weapon X or or attempt to explain Mr. Sinister's family tree instead, both of which would probably also be a lot of fun. Be sure to let us know. When it comes to Wolverine's wives, there are two main ones that stick out to me. One of whom he was actually married to, another he was almost married to, but you know, I think we can still count her. She's a pretty big deal. Other than Jean Grey and his weakness for redheads, the major loves of Wolverine's life, I would say, would be Mariko Yoshida, his fiance, and Itsu, his wife. Although Wolverine was also shown to be married to the ancestor of a person named Hoshiko in the story Aftermath in Wolverine Exit Wounds, and was once also married to Ophelia Sarkissian, aka Viper. That's a thing that happened. With Mariko, their love did not produce any offspring, but it was a strong love regardless. And they did have a foster daughter together, so that's a thing. Mariko was introduced in X-Men issue 118, and we'd come to know her as the daughter of Lord Shinjin, the leader of Clan Yoshida, a crime syndicate in Japan. Mariko is also a cousin to Mutant Sunfire, which was how she first met Wolverine. The two fell in love and eventually ended ended up engaged after the death of Mariko's father. However, due to the manipulations of Mastermind, their wedding would be called off. Later, it would be back on but delayed until Mariko felt she had made right the wrongs that Mastermind's influence over her had caused. She died before they could be married though. While she would be resurrected much later, her and Wolverine's relationship would never really recover. Itsu is the wife of Logan, who he met, fell in love with, and married during his time training with Bando Saburo in Japan. Itsu became pregnant but was unfortunately assassinated by 
by Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, before her child could be born. Initially, it was actually believed that their offspring did not survive, but later we learned that thanks to the power of the baby's X gene, it actually did survive. The baby was retrieved by Romulus, who left him on the doorstep of a well off couple that would adopt him. However, Romulus would also manipulate this baby, named Akahiro, but cruelly nicknamed Dokken, and now known by the codename Fang, to grow up to hate his father. His biological father, Wolverine, that is. Dokken would attempt to destroy Logan while working for the Red Right Hand, seeking out those who were Wolverine's offspring that he either never knew existed or had forgotten about due to, once again, much tampering with his mind and just overall memory loss, and using those relatives as weapons against their father. This group was known as the Mongrels. They died at Wolverine's hands without him knowing of their true origin till after he'd killed them all. Tragedy. Tragedy. At one point, Dokken and Wolverine would be pitted against one another by the machinations of Sabretooth, leading to Dokken tragically being drowned by his own father in a puddle. But don't worry, he returned and later would reconcile with his dad, and now he isn't even known by the name Dokken, but prefers to be addressed as Akihiro or Fang. Other prominent offspring of Logans from the main continuity include Laura Kinney, aka X23, who is also now known as Wolverine, his daughter, and also his female clone, Gabrielle Gabby Kinney, aka Scout, a clone of Laura, who is also seen as Wolverine's daughter, and Amiko, his adopted daughter who has spent a lot of time being raised by Wolverine's good friend Yukio, and previously was raised in part by Wolverine's love and fiance Mariko, prior to her death of course. What is the most interesting thing you learned in this video, or which relative of Wolverine's is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more content like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. That's all for me, bub. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, you stay nerdy, YouTube. <laughs>